Well, Kestama, the Labour leader, has been responding to the events of last night, uh, defending his own conduct, saying he was not pressurising the Speaker improperly in any way. What we've been hearing from the Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, is interesting. He's been saying that last night's events were very concerning, but he's also saying that the Speaker has apologised and said he will reflect. He's walking a, a fine line there. The government isn't diving in yet on the whole issue of whether the Speaker should keep his job. And what a lot of people are looking at, the metric that might switch the government's view, might make them think, well, actually, we are going to allow a vote of no confidence to happen uh, maybe on Monday in the Speaker, is that tally of names being added, MPs' names to the petition, as it were, the early day motion. At the moment, when last I checked, it was 67. There were 38 Conservatives' uh, names on there. What could change all of that? Uh, maybe a, a, a revelation of some kind about uh, the plotting that happened behind the scenes. Maybe just the fact that going after the Speaker looks very petty, but a lot of people feel that that tally of MPs probably needs to be at 100 or a bit higher for the government uh, to feel that it has to call that vote of no confidence. For now, though, the Speaker's job is still in the balance. <laughs> At times last night, the Commons Chamber was shoutier than the demonstrations outside. The Speaker had tried to calm the anger with an apology. Stephen Flynn. The morning after the night before, that still wasn't enough for some. As I have expressed to you privately prior to proceedings here today, we do, the, we do not, on these benches, therefore believe that you can continue in your role as Speaker. We do not have confidence in your ability to do so. I apologise to the SNP. Just, just bear with me for me. I apologise and I apologise to the House. I made a mistake. We do make mistakes. I am up to mine. He said he'd been trying to make sure MPs wanting a ceasefire in Gaza had a Gaza motion they felt they could support. If they didn't, he said, they could be threatened by extremists. I never, ever want to go through a situation where I pick up a phone to find a friend of whatever side has been murdered by terrorists. Yeah. It is with regret that I've laid an early day motion in my name. The Tory MP, who's gathering names demanding a vote of no confidence, asked when he might get one. The government wasn't giving much away. The government will always listen carefully to the views of this House, and the Speaker needs to command the confidence of it. But some on the Tory right said the Speaker should be kept in his job. I think we should move on now, and I would recommend that we don't put in motions of no confidence. He should rightfully be in his place in that chair presiding. We are lucky to have him. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Aren't we? No. No. Aren't we? He snapped at the no confidence backers. No, they snapped back. Yesterday afternoon, uh, there was uh, those people who were proposing that early day motion were expecting that there were going to be between 50 and 100 signatures on it by close of play. And um, I and a few others counselled against uh, that sort of behaviour. And it was reassuring, therefore, to find out this morning that uh, there were only, I think, 33 signatures. But as we speak now, the number's going up. It was 55 uh, a moment ago. What level does it reach when the government says, actually, we do have to have a vote on the floor, uh, a vote of no confidence in the Speaker? And do you think, if it got to that, he might go before the vote or the debate even happened? I don't think a vote of no confidence in the Speaker were it to be held would be carried. If you only got, say, a third of the House voting uh, no confidence in the Speaker, does he carry on? Well, I think it's going to be very difficult in any case for Lindsay to carry on in his role. We are, of course, the third party in Westminster, and there's, there's indeed many others and other parties who are questioning his position right now. Shall we have a countdown? And I think they said five on here. I think it should be at least ten. Whether it's all over for the Speaker could depend on further allegations of backroom deals surfacing and the degree to which the focus now shifts to the threats to MPs' safety. If a motion of no confidence reaches the floor of the House in our current Speaker, I will fight it with every fibre and breath in my body. Mr Speaker acted the way he did yesterday for the best of reasons, to keep people safe. Overnight, there was more bombing of Rafa in Gaza. A mosque was flattened, many homes destroyed too. 
In Westminster, the Speaker offered MPs the option of an emergency debate to make amends for the chaotic debate last night. The conflict continues, even if Parliament looks distracted and diminished. Well, I'm now joined by the Labour MP for Huddersfield, Barry Shearman, who told the Commons today he has to watch where he walks after he received a death threat last year. Barry Shearman, the Speaker has lost the confidence of the SNP and dozens of Conservatives. He's unable to carry out his duties properly, isn't he? I think he can, he's perfectly able. Um, I'm, one, I'm the longest serving MP, Labour MP. Uh, I've seen a lot of speakers, and Lindsay Hoyle was the best of the bunch. Um, he's got a reputation for fairness, uh, being on the side of Parliament, standing up for Parliament. Um, and I think one uh, evening and in which uh, I think he was wrong-footed, um, I think he tried uh, to be even and balanced, thought he'd got it right, and he got it wrong. Well, he, but he, we're all he... human, and uh, I, I don't... I'm sorry. I don't think uh, he, he uh, should go. I think as we'd lose a great public servant and one the best speaker right. I can remember. Has he been wrong-footed by your leader, Sir Keir Starmer? No, I don't think so. I think what happened, uh, knowing Lindsay, he tried to make sure that everyone got the shout and uh, accepted three, uh, the three amendments from the three parties. Um, yeah, but he, he got Keir Starmer out of a hole. I don't think it was for that reason at all, and I don't think the Speaker would have gone along with that. But can we put that in the context? That there's a febrile atmosphere in Parliament at the moment. There's a Scottish nationalist. Most of them think they're going to lose their seats. Uh, the, the Tories, half of them, are pretty sure to lose their seats. And quite honestly, this, to me, looks like a diversionary uh, tactic. You know, if you see the close-ups of the behaviour last night, of the SNP, the language that the uh, BBC had to, uh, uh, had to uh, uh, stop, uh, the recording, and on the other hand, uh, on, the, on the Conservative side, baying and uh, behaving like kids at a, a, a dreadful school. Well, so the Speaker th said th th this, th was this, a... this, this was a plan. I think, Cathy, some of you in the media are missing. This is a diversion to take us away from the serious issue of politics, the serious issues of members of Parliament's safety. Well, let's talk about members of Parliament's safety, because the Speaker talked about absolutely frightening threats. He didn't spell them out. Can you spell some of those threats out? I can. Um, the fact of the matter is um, that someone like me, we know with social media, MPs get threats all the time, some more serious than others. And when 18 months ago I got a, a threat at birth, I thought it was, uh, it, 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 we were going to ignore it. Uh, and then we looked at all the social media and a man said he was going to come down from Yorkshire to, uh, to London to sort me out, and he hoped the police were still uh, armed in, in Westminster. And again, um, yes, people started taking it seriously. And the individual was arrested uh, using um, uh, 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 very advanced techniques at King's Cross Station. Mm. And uh, he was arrested. Uh, he was taken in front of the magistrates, and he was sectioned into a, a mental hospital. But you, and can you tell me a what few impact, months later, I w what impact does that have on you now in your doing your job, and what 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 fear do you well, feel on a I, daily basis? I, Kathy, if I can just can, can I just finish the story? That you know, a few months later, I was informed by the House of Commons authorities he was out in London and knew where I lived. So uh, you can imagine from that time, I am very careful about how I get to work. I, we are careful about how, how our children and grandchildren uh, are, are looked after. Uh, we make, I make sure I don't stand near the edge of the platform on the tube or in a train. Uh, constantly, we, you have that in the back of your mind. Mm. And about uh, two months ago, um, out of the blue, someone punched me very hard in the face outside a restaurant. Um, and, you know, most of us aren't used to physical uh, uh, violence. I think someone punched me when I was seven in the playground. It's a very great shock. Mm. And, of course, uh, <laughs> I've got a house now uh, that is like a citadel. 
But I've had very little support in terms of what I face, in terms of the worry and the concerns, and the you know the wear that one, the right. mental wear that has uh, that we all have once these threats become. And remember, my next door neighbour was killed uh, by a, 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 a person who was uh, uh, mentally disturbed. Barry Shearman, thank you very much for joining us.